Thank you for tuning in to Watch Sixto. My name's Sixto. Today is the review of Fair and Swift Wayfinder. This watch is actually incredible for being a um, uh, what word can I call it? For for having a quartz movement, it runs like an automatic. Speaking of automatic, here is my Seiko Save Save the Ocean. Let's see. Look how they both run. They both r almost run simultaneously, like they're literally using the same 4R30, 36 movement. Which, in case, this one is actually rocking a VH31. Sweeping second, so that's that's actually pretty cool. I just I dig the the dial on this guy. It's a um, it's a loom dial version. Uh, this watch is retail at uh. Four hundred dollars for this guy. Last time I saw on on their website. It's a United States based company. They get the part from all over, but it's assembled in uh, Illinois, Chicago, Illinois, in their factory. So the so the you know pretty much uh, built in the U.S. It has a hundred and twenty rotational click bezel. You can hear it. And they have the stainless steel Riot that's in there. Let's see if I can get it to focus. It has the BGW uh, 9 a blue loom on the uh, bezel insert. It has the C3 um, green on the hands. Then they have like a little bit blue on the inside of the dial. I'm sorry, reverse. Uh, well, you'll see it when I put the uh, video of the loom on there. This loom is freaking insane because uh, they had to loom up the um, the dial, the hand, um, the indices in the hands. So this loom is phenomenal. As, uh, what I love about it is that the, um, this is the the original strap that it came with. It's a NATO strap. It's a uh, it has a, a, a it's a, a yeah <laughs> I'm drawing a blank brain fart. It has a, 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 a it's like a elastic like when you wear like pretty much like the fabric that you have on your on your underwear for the waistband where it snaps and pulls and it holds pretty damn good. And, and here is the case back. I actually dig the engraving that they put in there. You could feel it. They provided another strap for this and a, a pretty cool um, a carrying bag. Like if you take that out to go nature, to go um, literally outdoors, if you're if you want to, or just use it for another bag. If you go to the gym, throw your your uh, dirty sweat towels in there. Almost has like a feel of a Seiko uh, Samurai, and also kind of looks like um uh, like a spinnaker. But honestly, this this well, I never had a spinnaker in my hand, but seen quite a few of them. But this guy. Will probably beat the pants out of that uh, the spinnaker watch, and also they have their engraving on this part of the stainless steel buckle, and not on the not at the uh, at the main, but at least you know you got it stamped once. 
I have this guy measuring from lug to lug. Speaking of which, it has a nice curve so it could uh, hug your wrist a little bit better, a taper down, so you know you ain't gonna be getting the that overhang. So it's a 49.5 from the, the this part of the chapter ring, where barely or the bezel, the outer bezel. I got it at 40, 42.9, and with the crown because it sticks out. I have it at 47.5, 20 mil lug width, without the the thickness of the of the of the uh, of the natal strap. I have it at 12.9. Then adding this guy is probably gonna be 13, 13.5. Screw down crown. You hear that pop, and one pull out to change the time. Then you screw it back down. It's stainless steel. It's uh, all. It's not uh, polished stainless steel, but it's matted. Sapphire crystal. I got my diamond. I got my diamond selector to see if it really reads sapphire crystal. And we got it. We have sapphire, which is cool. At least you know the sapphire. At least you know the crystal could could give you that beautiful uh, glare free. Not like how this guy will when you get the light on there, you can see. But when you have light, eh, about the same. But this guy doesn't have a sapphire crystal. Or does it? Let's find out. So, this is a cool watch. I just love it. It's built in the United States. This, well, I forgot to mention, this one was lent in to me by Ross Gallen. Awesome guy. Met him through the uh, Discord, and he's also on uh, Instagram. This company's been around for a minute, but never. Yeah, no sapphire for my Seiko. Cool. Maybe a future project. This is a cool watch. I love how they. They put the beak on here to protect the crown, even though screw down crown, but give it that added protection. And this is a water resistance of 100 meters. So you got 330 feet. So you know you can literally die with this bad boy. Not like a, not like a nice little dress watch where you gotta baby it. Especially when it's sprinkling outside. With this, you know, you could literally drop it in the water and pick it out. Shake it off and put it back on. Give you a wrist shot. Like I said, the loom on here is ridiculous. It's about as... Comparable with uh, my Zelo Swordfish and my ISL uh, 58 Monster. And hide the excess material. There's a trick. So you could wear it like a traditional strap, but as long as you get it going to, however. Here it is, a seven three quarter inch wrist. I just like it, like for especially in the summer or in the winter. This the strap is freaking awesome and comfortable. Size comparison. Let's see. 
from the case when you put them lug to lug. The fair and sweat looks like it's a bigger one. But about the same thickness. And of course, two different looms. Pretty sure. Pretty sure it'll give Seiko a run for the money. This loom is freaking insane. You'll see it when I uh, splice in the loom on this guy. Besides that, it's a comfortable watch. I have not seen anything that I would really change. I just I still dig the the layout of a the of the dial. It looks like a desert. It's, it's freaking cool. Let me know if you guys um, had hands-on experience with the fair and sweat. And what do you guys think about them? For 400 bucks, without a stainless steel bracelet, honestly. My, me personally, I think it's a little price too high for not having a stainless steel for being um, a NATO strap. I think the price could have been down. 300, 275, but that's, that's to them, not to me. But still, uh, honestly, that's a solid piece. So I guess you're, you're buying for what is being built in, literally, in the United States if you live in the U.S. But that's still a cool watch. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Until the next one, bye.